The Dharmapada is a collection of verses uttered by the Buddha on various occasions throughout his life. Behind each verse, there is a story. This is one such story. The story of Samavati and Magandhya. Once upon a time, there was a great beauty in Kusambi. Her name was Magandhya. She was said to have the beauty of a celestial nymph and entranced all who gazed upon her. Her mother and father were Brahmins and immensely proud of their daughter's beauty. Suitors came from all over the country, handsome, rich, but none were good enough for their daughter. One day, at early dawn, the Buddha surveyed the world and perceived that the Brahmin and his wife possessed the disposition to attain to the third path of enlightenment that very day. He came to Kasambi and was seen in the marketplace by the Brahmin. The Brahmin had never seen such a wonderful human being as the Buddha. He rushed to get his wife and daughter to accompany him and approached the Buddha and said, Monk, I give you my daughter to cherish and support. The Buddha replied, I have no need for your daughter. Since my retirement from the world, even Mara's daughters, appearing as they did in every conceivable enticing form, could not arouse in me the slightest passion. What is this body filled with dung and urine? I would not wish to touch it, even with my foot. As the Buddha finished saying this, penetrating insight came to the Brahmin and his wife and they were established there and then in the path and fruit of the third stage of enlightenment. Margandia had a very different response. She thought to herself, if this man does not want me, then it is perfectly proper for him to say so, but he declares me to be full of dung and urine. And there and then she conceived a resentment for the Buddha. Did the Buddha know she had conceived this hatred? He knew. For the sake of the mother and father, he spoke as he did. With this great change of state, the parents decided to take their daughter to the uncle and asked him to look after her. They then decided to retire from the world and shortly thereafter attained arahatship. Now the king's name was Udena, and the uncle, feeling that his niece was worthy of a king, decided to present her to Udena. Udena was struck immediately by her beauty, and conferred upon her the status of chief consort, with a retinue of five hundred ladies in waiting. And so Magandhya achieved equal status to another, who was called Samavati. Now Samavati also had a retinue of 500 ladies in waiting. She also had a female slave called Kujutara, who went regularly every day to buy flowers from a gardener. One day when Kujutara went to buy her flowers, the gardener told her there were no flowers available because they were being used to present to his very special guest, the Buddha. He said if she wanted, she could wait for the flowers that remained after the Buddha had given his teaching. So Kujutara waited and listened to the Buddha's teaching. And due to her previously accumulated merit, understanding arose in her, and she attained the path of stream entry. When she returned to the palace, Samavati asked her, why had she taken so long? Kujutara explained she had heard a discourse from the Buddha and acquired a deep understanding of the Dharma. Samavati was struck by her account. My good woman, you have drunk of the deathless. Give me a drink of the deathless too. Very well, said Kujutara, and sat down with Samavati and her retinue and recited the teaching just as it had been given to her by the Buddha and Samavati and her retinue also attained stream entry. From that day, Kujutara did not have to do any menial work, but took the place of mother and teacher to Samavati. 
She listened to the discourses of the Buddha and repeated them to Samavati and her retinue. In the course of time, Kujutara mastered the whole of the Tipitaka. Samavati and her retinue wished very much to see the Buddha and pay respect to him, but they were afraid the king might be displeased with them, so making holes in the walls of their palace, they looked through them and paid respect to the Buddha every day as he was going to the houses of the chief lay disciples. Magandhya then came to learn about how Samavati and her maids paid respect to the Buddha through the holes in the walls of their living quarters. So she planned to take her revenge on the Buddha and to harm Samavati and her maids, who were ardent devotees of the Buddha. Magandhya told the king that Samavati and her maids had made holes in the wall of their living quarters and that they had done so to make outside contacts and were disloyal to the king. King Udena saw the holes in the wall, but when he asked Samavati about this, when he heard the truth, he did not get angry. But Magandhya kept on trying to make the king believe Samavati was not loyal to him and that she was even trying to kill him. On one occasion, knowing that the king would be visiting Samavati within the next few days and that he would be taking his loot along with him, Magandhya inserted a snake into the loot and closed the hole with a bunch of flowers. Magandhya followed King Udena to Samavati's quarters after trying to stop him on the pretext that she had some presentiment and felt worried about his safety. At Samavati's place, Magandhya removed the bunch of flowers from the hole of the loot. The snake came hissing out and coiled itself on the bed. When the king saw the snake, he believed Magandhya's words that Samavati was trying to kill him. The king was furious. He commanded Samavati to stand up and all her ladies to line up behind her. He then lifted up his bow and arrow, a bow so strong that many soldiers were needed to string it, and it was said that it could pierce the hardest rock. He shot the arrow, but Samavati and her ladies radiated metta so powerful that the arrow turned back. It was said it was as if the arrow had struck his heart, and the king realised Samavati was innocent. He heard more from her about the Buddha and gave her permission to invite him and his disciples to the palace for alms food and for delivering discourses. Finally, Magandhya decided to give up trying to persuade the king and instead persuaded her uncle to go to Samavati's house. There she told him to burn it with all the women inside. And this is what the uncle did. Samavati and her retinue could not escape. But as the house was burning, they kept on meditating, keeping constantly mindful throughout. Thus some of them attained the second path of enlightenment, and the rest attained the third path of enlightenment. And all were reborn in celestial realms, and were bound for final enlightenment. News of the fire spread quickly. The king was shocked and saddened by the news, but he immediately suspected Magandhya, since she had been constantly badgering him about Samavati. So he feigned delight, saying at last he could rest easy, knowing that his disloyal wife had died. Hearing this, Magandhya promptly admitted that it was she who had instructed her uncle to burn their house. The king pretended to be very pleased with her, and said, he would do her a great favour and honour all her relatives. However, when she and her relatives presented themselves in the palace courtyard, the king had prepared a punishment that fitted the crime. In the meantime, the monks came to the Buddha to ask him how it was possible that the renowned lay supporters, Samavati and her retinue, all of whom had achieved high spiritual distinction, could suffer such a terrible fate. The Buddha explained that it was due to a residue of their past karma and gave this story from the past. A 
A very long time ago, there lived 501 ladies who lived a playful life of luxury in a royal palace. It was their habit to serve a Pacheka Buddha who was supported by the king. Each day they provided the Pacheka Buddha with food and drink, and as a result had an increasing reverence for the deep wisdom he undoubtedly possessed. One day the Pacheka Buddha went to sit by the riverbank amidst some dry grass. He entered a very deep state of meditation. That same time the women came down to the river and spent the day at play in the water. At the end of the day they emerged shivering and cold and decided to set fire to the dry grass to warm themselves. When the grass burnt down they saw with great alarm that the Pacheka Buddha was sitting there. But instead of trying to make amends, they thought how angry the king would be, so they built up firewood and oil to make the Pacheka Buddha burn completely, and then fled the scene. The Pacheka Buddha could not be harmed by the fire, and after seven days he emerged from the meditation and simply walked away. The women, however, had had the intention to harm a great being, and this was extremely bad karma that resulted in a rebirth in a deep hell. The result of the karma was not fully exhausted when they emerged from the hell, but was finally used up in this present life. The Buddha said, because Samavati and her retinue had also acquired great merit, they had understood the Dharma directly, and they were on the path to go beyond birth and death, and so never die. And then the Buddha pronounced the following stanzas. Heedfulness, the path to the deathless. Heedlessness, the path to death. The heedful do not die. The heedless are as if already dead. Knowing this as a true distinction, those wise in heedfulness rejoice in heedfulness, enjoying the range of the noble ones. Constantly meditative, the ever earnestly striving ones realize the bond free, the supreme Nibbana. <laughs>